baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to Jesus. Come on, why are you clapping? Why don't you just shout the name of Jesus right now? Come on, let's shout about four or five times. The name that is above all names. The name that is powerful name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Holmes. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Such an honor and a privilege to be here tonight, camp meeting, and to be able to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost already in this place tonight. I don't know about you, but I feel very strong the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. I have come expecting God to work miracles in this place tonight. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you for Pastor Holm inviting us to be here. And uh, we love this church, love Pastor and Sister Holmes, Brother Nathan and his wife, and uh, this church family. I want to say that I want to give honor to... Uh, my parents, the ones that's here tonight, and uh, I never get to see them, just sometimes once a year, because we live 1,800 miles away from each other. They live in the north, and I live in the south. And I got to meet them yesterday in Atlanta, and we drove to Little Rock, and uh, so I'm happy that, that they are here. I give honor to them tonight, because of what they taught. I know Jesus tonight. I am what I am. And I always say if they had all those child abuse laws when I was growing up, my mother would spend the rest of her life in prison. <laughs> because she really believed in spanking us. Amen. Amen. We, there was a tree in front of our house that we called the holy tree because every every single service she was going to get a switch out of that tree and she was going to spank us amen but I'm, I'm glad that she taught us the ways of god hallelujah praise god hallelujah thank you jesus so there's several people here in this place that has impacted my life I gave honor to brother and sister taylor from johnsville louisiana also have impacted our life in Brazil and uh, of course give honor to Pastor and Sister Holmes and this church family. But most of all give honor to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus we are here tonight in camp meeting. Aren't you glad that one day Jesus called your name? Clap your hands, everybody, and shout the name of Jesus one more time. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give honor to all the ministers, all the saints of God. If you open your Bible tonight with me, I feel like reading one scripture praying and fasting since I found out that I was speaking at the camp meeting. Our church in Brazil was praying and fasting for this camp meeting. And uh, I confess that I, I don't feel like I'm a camp meeting preacher. 
I always say that God has called me to the mission field to win souls. But I feel like God spoke to me a couple days ago. Ooh. Hallelujah. And for the last two nights, I haven't been able to sleep because I've been feeling the presence of God. And what God spoke to me, to me, is very powerful. And I believe that miracles are going to put, take place in this service tonight. God doesn't need a lot of a long time to work miracles, but in a twinkling of an eye, He can work many thousands of miracles in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you open your Bibles in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, and verse number 20, very known scripture that says, So the people shouted when the priests blew with their trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout. Everybody say shouted with a great shout. That the wall fell down flat. Woo. So the people went up into the city, every man strength before him, and they took the city. Hallelujah. Tonight, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach for just a few minutes the effects of a loud shout the effects of a loud shout come on everybody in this house would you lift up your hands and would you shout to the Lord as loud as you can shout right now as a praise Worshippers, and they worship the devil just as sincere as what we have worshipped Jesus right now in this house. They are not ashamed to worship the devil. They are not ashamed to shout to the devil. They are not ashamed to beat the 
the drums and scream and, and uh, stomp their feet and dance. And Brother Nathan Holmes been to Brazil with uh, young people in this church several times. And, and I have took them. There is a cemetery a few blocks from our church in Brazil, Campinas, Brazil, where there is an altar to the devil outside and inside the cemetery where devil worshipers worship the devil all night long, all day long. You can go there 24 hours a day and you'll see people shouting and screaming and worshiping the devil. Many times when you walked in at the door of the cemetery, you can already hear their scream as their devil possessed shouting and screaming and drinking blood of animals and killing chickens and, and cutting their bodies and offer sacrifices to the devil. I made my mind a long time ago. I'm not going to let a devil worshiper out worship me. This is a Holy Ghost camp meeting. This is a one God Jesus name. Apostolic church camp meeting. So we just might as well let God have control of this service tonight. We just might as well let Jesus walk in this building and begin to work miracles in the sanctuary tonight. You need a miracle, just lift up your voice and shout as loud as you can shout. Come on, the effects of a loud shout. Hallelujah. Six years ago, I was invited to go to a devil worshiping camp meeting. I went to a devil worshiping camp meeting because I wanted to take pictures to bring to America because a lot of people don't believe when missionaries come and talk about devil worshiping. And uh, on December the 9th, it's a holiday in Brazil where they worship the goddess, a lady god, by the name of Imanjar. And thousands of Brazilian goes to the beach and they worship that God all day long and they offer sacrifices and, and they uh, buy expensive perfume and flowers and presents and they put inside these boats and, and they begin to push these boats into the ocean as a gift, as a present to the Imanjai God and I was standing there with thousands of people and I was taking pictures and uh, they, could, uh, they could feel that I wasn't a devil worshiper that I worship Jesus they would look uh, mean at me but I didn't care greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world if you have Jesus on your side there is no devil there is no demon in hell that can and will prevail against the Holy Ghost that is inside of you come on shout as loud as you can shout the effects of a loud shout Why don't you touch your neighbor? Begin to shake him in the Holy Ghost. Begin to praise God with him. Begin to praise God with him. As the anointing begin to flow from the north to the east, north, south, to the west of this building. Hallelujah. And that day, watching them worshiping the devil, I saw little kids about five and six years old Reverend Floydham and they were worshiping the devil but it really touched me I began to weep as they began to worship in circles and they began to dance to a God that don't do any good for them and I watched them as they began to get devil possessed and they fell on the floor and they were screaming in pain their body would get all the form and because they didn't have control of their body and I began to weep and I began to praise God I said God I thank you that I know who you are and I thank you that I don't have to do all of this to worship you to feel your presence but I can lift my hands up and I can shout as loud as I can shout and a supernatural power will come down in a minute. <laughs> 
the Holy Ghost. Somebody stop the devil's head right now. Somebody begin to stop the... Come on, just praise him. There is the effects of a loud shout. The effects of a loud shout. Don't matter. It doesn't matter what your neighbor think about you. It doesn't matter what your neighbor in front of you think about you. It's your miracle. It's your victory. It's... It's your healing. It's your revival. So you just might as well shout and praise the name of Jesus. I've never been to a football game now I don't pretend going because hallelujah I don't have time for those things but right beside our church of just a few blocks there is a soccer stadium and uh, when their team, team wins you don't have to ask them They don't walk defeated. But when they walked out of that stadium, they're screaming, they're shouting, they're clapping their hands. Let me tell you, we are, we belong to a team tonight that is never loses a battle and never loses a game. We come on somebody, we serve a Jesus that before he walks in the battlefield, we already know what is our answer. It is victory. So you just might as well shout. Come on, shout everybody with a voice of triumph. The effects of a loud shout. The effects of a loud shout. Miracles can happen right now. Tumors can disappear right now. Cancer can be healed right now. Come on. Miracles wants to happen in the midst of a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when... Uh, they were persecuting our church in Campinas and most of you know my life story started passing when I was 14 years old went to a bad part of town had three members one brother he was 91 years old two sisters they were 76 years old and a small little tape and an old accordion that I could only play in the key of C And five old benches. A lot of people told my parents, said, oh, just give him three months and everything's going to be over. But when Jesus is on your side, I said, when Jesus is on your side, I said, when Jesus is on your side, there's going to be miracles. Oh, I feel miracles happening right now. There's going to be testimonies, healings in this house tonight. The effects of a loud shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit down for just a minute. I remember as we were fighting persecution in the city hall called me one day now Campinas is a city over one million people and the mayor called me into his office said pastor you know that we're gonna have to shut your building down I said oh he said Sunday night we took a machine I don't know how you call that machine in English but it measures the sound he said and we measured the sound while y'all was worshiping he said y'all sound is so loud that's polluting the air in the area he said, so that's the reason we're going to have to shut it down. I said, what about the nightclubs? What about the discos? What about the Mardi Gras? What about the carnival? What about their noise? I said, you can shut the building, but you can't stop the church of the living God. Oh, shout real loud. Shout real loud. Begin to... He 
said, we're going to have to shut it down. I said, that's fine. The devil always tries to email you some bad results or send you some messages from hell. What you need to do, send them back with a bomb of the Holy Ghost. If the doctor said you're not going to be healed, you send the result, you send a, a, an answer back. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. And because of his stripes, I am healed. The doctor, the lawyer said you're not going to win the case. You just send a, a message back, said God, it's on my side. It doesn't matter what the devil say. It doesn't matter what hell says. If I just shout. learn to shout come on sometimes we get too sophisticated sometimes we don't want to mess our hair do we don't want to get sweaty i'm talking about it holy ghost outpouring tonight in this building this is what i'm talking about we need an old-fashioned apostolic pentecostal outpouring of the holy ghost Excuse me, I'm going to praise God right now. Come on, tell your neighbor, slap your shoulder, say, excuse me, I'm going to make some room to shout. I'm going to... Hey, when you shout, miracles begins to happen. When you shout, Holy Ghost comes down. shake somebody else shake somebody else get a hold of somebody and they're gonna shake them in the holy ghost shake them in the holy ghost if they get mad let them get mad at brother alvior just shake them in the holy ghost shake them in the holy ghost shake them in the holy ghost persecution we are very blessed people we go through some trials but we don't really know what it is to be beaten because you've been baptized in the name of Jesus I have a young boy in our church when he got the Holy Ghost his mother was very strong from another organ of church she said if you're gonna belong to that Pentecostal church every time you go to church you're gonna sleep outside he said, well, I'm just going to have to sleep outside because I've got the Holy Ghost. Somebody need to be a determined nation right now. You're going to receive your miracle and you're going to shout for your miracle. You're going to shout for your healing. You're going to shout for your You're going to shout for salvation in your home and your family. went by and he slept outside his name was Fabio one day his mom I'm almost finished we're gonna pray God's gonna work miracles in this house cancer is gonna be it's gonna leave in the name of Jesus tumors are going to disappear in the name of Jesus Blind people, God, it's going to open their eyes. Do you believe that? Am I preaching to a believer's church? Now I'm preaching to a camp meeting. This is the first night we just might as well have camp meeting. That mother that persecuted that young boy for four years 
began to have a strong pain in her stomach. Went to the doctor, Brother Wesley Jackson, and, and the doctor made it some tests, and the tests came back. You've got stomach cancer, and you will die in less than six months. Oh, guess where she went to church the first Sunday night? They can talk about us. They hate the way we dress. They don't like the way we worship. They think we get too wild worshiping. But when they need a miracle, they know where to come. They know that there is a group of people that's going to touch God. Come on, somebody get in the Holy Ghost right now. She walked in that night and she met a group of about two, three hundred people praying before church. She was a night of God worshiper. Never been to a Pentecostal church in her whole life. This is the words that came out from a person that don't, don't even, didn't even have the Holy Ghost. She sat about the fourth pew in the middle of our church in Campinas. And all of a sudden, while people were shouting, we're just old-fashioned uh, Pentecost like this church. We shout while we pray. We dance while we pray. We run the aisle. We don't need the beat, the beat of the music to dance. Some churches, they can only dance when the music is going on. But I'm preaching to a group of people that you can worship when there's no music. You can dance when there is no music. You can shout anytime. Oh, clap your hands and praise. And she sat there about five minutes. And we have some old fashioned people in our church prayer warriors that if you don't get the Holy Ghost by one, and you'll get them by shaking. And I was just praying, oh God, don't let them shake that lady because she hates us. This is her first time. You know how some pastors, how sometimes we feel. Not that we're ashamed, but we're just trying to be wise to win somebody. And all of a sudden, I saw those two worshipers. And I say, oh, oh, here they go. And each one of them grabbed that lady by the hand. They begin to shout with her. They say, honey, this is a Pentecostal church, so you just might as well stand up. And we're going to shower you and God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden that lady that never felt the Holy Ghost, she began to shout. Yeah! Hallelujah. Screaming. Tears flow from her eyes. So finally I went back there. I said, man, whew. Thank, the, thank the Lord. I said, what's going on? She said, you don't understand. She said, I hate y'all for the last four years. She said, but tonight when I walked in this building and I met y'all praying, there was people on the floor, there was people on the top of the pews, there was people, hallelujah, pray, praying and standing up and kneeling down. She said, I, I saw a vision. And she said, there was an angel flying in the church now this is a, a lady that don't have the Holy Ghost and she said and this angel had like a, a, a picture in his hand and she said every person that was praying he would go to them and pour something on top of them she said I don't know what it was she said but I begin to feel something good she said, all of a sudden, I said, Jesus, if this church really has the truth, let the angel come and pour that thing over me. Hallelujah. And I feel angels of the 
Lord all over this building. Why don't you lift up your hands and say, Angel, do it to me. It's me. It's me. Shout the power, the effects of a loud shout. she said and when the angel came and poured I don't know what it was she said on top of my head she said I begin to feel fire it began to burn all over my body she said and that fire went to my stomach and she said I have cancer and I'm uh, literally dying and the doctor said I will be dead in less than six months she said but I feel that God has healed me she didn't get the Holy Ghost that night but the next morning she went back to the doctors and the do she's, she's a loud lady and she, she told her she said I need you to do some manure tests and uh, x-ray and whatever they do for cancer and um, they said oh you know Maria you've got cancer she said I had cancer but last night I went to a Pentecostal church and I met Jesus Christ of Nazareth the great physician he touched me she said I know I am healed they laid her in the table begin to do the test after a few minutes went by, the doctors walked in. Several doctors shook their head, shaking their head. They looked at Mary and said, yeah, something has happened to you. She said, last week, they said, last week you had stomach cancer and you were dying. But there's something wrong, something happened between last week and today. You have a brand new stomach. There is no signs of cancer. You are completely healed. When they said that, that woman stood up and sat up in the, in the table and in that bed and she lifted up her hands and God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost right there. I know it's full. I'm just going to ask you to do what the Lord told me to do right now. I was sitting inside the van when the Lord spoke to me in South Carolina, actually North Carolina, this week. The effects of a loud shout. I need you to lift both hands in the air, all the believers. And for one minute, just a single minute, and I'm closing. Hush, hula makai, usande kosh alama. A few angels all over this house. When I count to three, I want you to shout as loud as you can shout. I need a, I need a, some, I need a watch. I need somebody that has a clock. We're going to count to one minute. That's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I need somebody that has a clock. La maca se lo bo shanda la baja. Just tell me. Ando lo bo kosha la baja. And at the end of this minute, there's going to be people receiving miracles all over this building. There's going to be people drunk. This is for the believers. If you don't believe, honey, just might as well sit down. If you don't believe, you just might as well put your hands down and sit back down. I need all the believers to lift up your hands in the air. Go. Right now. One, two, three, go. Shout for one minute.
drunk. There's people already getting drunk all over the house. There's people already receiving miracles all over this house. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus, we lose miracles, lose healings in this house. Revival, let revival break through. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just go ahead and have a Holy Ghost time. Shut up. Go ahead, go ahead, go. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22, 16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3, 5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation, to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.